All right, government and civics class. We're going to go over the second part of your notes today for um, foreign policy. And just so you know how it's going to go. And then on Friday, tomorrow, I am going to give you guys a little review guide and uh, maybe set up another Zoom to where we can review it quickly if you guys uh, want to. Um, and then your test is going to be on Monday. So let's go over the second part of these notes. Go to slide seven where it says State Department. Now, the State Department, you always hear this like whenever there's issues going on with Iran or China, North Korea, they'll say, well, the State Department says this, the State Department said that. Well, what is the State Department? The State Department is the executive department responsible for foreign relations. Now, it is headed by the Secretary of State, their advisors, ambassadors, and different embassies around the world. So that's the idea of what the State Department is. So, like I said, anytime there's a big foreign policy issue going on somewhere in the country, they're going to contact the State Department to, um, you know, see what they're doing and go from there. Okay. Now, <clears throat> next slide. One of the main things that we always want or we always want to build upon is diplomacy. All right. The countries don't want war. All right. Other, you know, leaders, they don't want war. I mean, some are a little... Um, I guess, pro-military, or, or not, I shouldn't say pro-military, pro-war than others, but the goal is always peace, and that is through diplomacy. And diplomacy is building relationships around the world. Ambassadors represent American interests and in building relations relationships with other countries. So once again, <clears throat> when the president, President Trump is going to appoint, or he already did, like an ambassador to France, okay, and that guy or lady is going to be over in France, and you know, they're going to be talking to the leaders of France and going over, you know, what we can do to keep our relationships strong. Uh, in many countries, we have ambassadors. Even in countries that uh, we don't necessarily get along with very well, we're still going to be ambassadors over there. Um, probably not North Korea, but other countries, of, of course. Uh, and, and that's the idea. And that's one of the main goals of ambassadors is you have them in these different countries. So, like, let's say... Uh, Issues do pop up with us in Russia, right? Well, we have American ambassadors in Russia. There's Russian ambassadors here. Before, you know, it blows up into something big, well, the ambassadors are going to get together with the leaders and be like, all right, how do we calm this down? What do we do to, you know, keep the peace, to move forward, all right? Next, treaties. Treaties are signed by the president, approved by the Senate, as we talked about yesterday. They're a formal agreement between two countries. These could be peace treaties to end battles. It could be an idea for trade. Uh, you know, any, any sort of agreement between two countries as far as, uh, you know, are you going to be allowed to use our ports or our airfields? Or, you know, we're going to trade you, uh, you know, our technology for your oil. You know, whatever it may be, these actual official agreements between two countries are known as treaties. Okay. Next is NATO. Now, NATO is a little bit like the United Nations or the League of Nations back when we did World War I and World War II back in AC2. What NATO is essentially is a military alliance between the United States, Canada, and European countries. Okay, uh, Members of NATO. Obviously, we're in it. Canada's in it as well and pretty much every European country. Now, this is not to be confused with the European Union, which is what England left recently. This is not that. In NATO, England is very much involved. And with the way NATO goes, say Britain is attacked by another country, right? Well, the countries in NATO are going to assume that as an attack on all their countries, okay? So they're going to defend Britain. That doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to go to war. What it does mean, though, is we are going to defend Britain in some way, shape, or form, okay? All right, number 11, economic deterrence before war. All right, so for sake of argument, let's say more issues pop up between us and Iran, right? It's not just a media, well, we got, we got some beef with Iran, we're going to war. No, there's going to be things they're going to try to do first. And the first thing they're going to do, which President Trump does a lot with them, is sanctions, all right? A ban on trade with a country. Um, in the past, the U.S. just lifted sanctions on Iran over its nuclear program that was under um, under President Obama. 
Uh, remember, there, there ended up being a, a treaty, a deal in place between the United States, Iran, and other countries around the world of things Iran would get for um, closing down their nuclear program. Trump takes office. Trump backs out of that treaty. All right. So that agreement is no more. It was an agreement made by President Obama. Once President Trump took over, he says, I don't like this agreement. The United States is backing out of it. And we are. We're out of it now. Um, other sanctions that have recently been lifted. Cuba over the Cuban Missile Crisis. That was all the way back in 1962. And just a few years ago, those sanctions have been lifted. There's still some issues in place between us, us and Cuba. But some of the most drastic sanctions have since been lifted. All right. Now, next slide, though. If all else fails, if there is no other choice, then yes, military force sometimes is needed and is used. Even when the United States uses military force, though, they try not to do full-scale invasions of countries. Um, you know, they send missiles over from, uh, you know, battleships in the sea. They may, um, <clears throat> excuse me, have like planes fly over and bomb them that way. The United States really doesn't try to do full-scale military invasions, but... Those are last resort type things. And they always say, you know, the military option is always on the table as a last resort. And sometimes that scares people. People will be like, you know, they'll be interviewing a, a, an advisor or somebody on CNN or Fox News or MSNBC. And they'll say, well, what about uh, military action? And they'll say all options are on the table. And then all of a sudden you see like the blinking, flashing, breaking news. Um, So-and-so said all options on the table for military force with Iran. And it's like, of course they're going to say that, though, right? Because if they say, no, no matter what, we're not going to do military action, well, Iran and other countries are going to say, well, okay, and then they're going to, you know, try to take advantage. So that's why they say those things. doesn't mean they want to do it. It just means, hey, these options need to be there, all right? All right, last slide. Foreign affairs can affect domestic policy. Now, when we talk about issues with other countries, it doesn't mean it can't change domestic policies here. Things going on within our country can change because of what's going on between us and other countries. And I gave you four examples. All right, number one, 9-11 and the war on terror means increased security at home. All right, um, none of you guys, I think, were alive when 9-11 happened. If you were, you were a little, little bitty baby. Um, airports are a lot different now as far as the screenings and all, you know, just all the hoops you need to go through just to get on an airplane. That's mainly because of what happened on 9-11. So something that was a foreign policy issue, even though it happened on our own soil, affects how we handle things domestically here. All right. Right now, right now today in 2020, COVID has made travel restrictions. All right. Look how I'm teaching you. I'm teaching you from my humble pad here, right? See my sweet Muhammad Ali picture behind me? Hannah Siege thought it was uh, like Rocky or Mike Tyson or something. It was just ter terrible analogy on your part, Hannah Siege. But these are domestic policies that are in place now because of something that started overseas. All right. Next, Cold War leads to fear of communism in the United States. We talked about that in AC2, right? Cold War, Soviet Union versus the United States. Well, now we have all this communism paranoia going on in our country. And finally, global warming leads to environmental policies. The United States has environmental policies here in our country to slow down or potentially stop global warming. So these are international issues, foreign policy issues that make us change or create new laws or regulations here domestically. Okay. Now, Tomorrow, I'm going to put up the review guide for you guys. The test on this, like I said, is going to be on Monday, all right? Um, I think it's going to be a pretty easy test for you guys. As you guys can see, it's very basic. It's very uh, straightforward. Make sure you study these notes. Um, listen to my YouTube videos, and I think you guys should be in good shape. If you have any questions, comments, concerns whatsoever, please shoot me a message on Teams. I will get back to you as soon as possible. Have a great day, guys. Bye.